Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dar, and for the last time in this series, I am the IT Geek. And I, I do love I do love a uh, kind of season finale, like a series finale. Because it just it's just so much hard work putting these together and it's so much fun as well, but it feels very it's like an accomplishment for me getting you know doing a series and completing it because uh, I'm sure you can I'm sure you can you know relate it, it is quite um you've got to be quite dedicated to get these series out and quite motivated and I'm, I'm very motivated to share my content and, and my knowledge um, and this episode, this series especially I've learned so much because it's just stack for me is a new topic yes I've got the AVD side of it which is what kind of reason I started looking at it but the, the 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 azure stack piece is very new to me so i've learned loads it's been so much fun doing it so this is the final episode um and like i said we, we saw in the last episode it was part one of my podcast with lisa clark and the second part of that in this episode so you look forward to that um but without further ado let's get started with the final episode so this is the final part of the uh integrate avd and azure stack hci topic uh so it's part three so today we're going to talk about data storage limitations and we're going to jump straight into the second part of my interview with, with Lisa Clark. <clears throat> so there are different classifications of data for AVD such as customer input, customer data, diagnostic data and service generated data. With well, just like HCI you can choose to store user data on premises when you deploy session host virtual machines or VMs and associated services such as file servers. However, some customer data, diagnostic data, and service generated data is still stored on, it, on, on Azure, so you can't get around that, unfortunately. So, as as with most services and you know cloud features, and and, and there are always going to be limitations. Everything has its limitations. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you're Microsoft, AWS, GCP. So everything's got limitations, right? And this is no different. So as you mentioned, the desktop with Azure Stack ACI does have the following limitations. You can't use some of the AVD desktop fe uh, AVD features when a session hosts are running on Azure Stack HCI, and they include AVD insights, session host scaling with Azure automation, as well as per user access pricing. So these are some of the limitations. Each host pool obviously must only contain session hosts on Azure or on Azure Stack HCI. So you can't mix and match um, session hosts on Azure and Azure Stack HCI in the same host pool. You can have different host pools, so you can have a host pool in Azure and a host pool in Azure Stack HCI, but you can't mix and match session hosts within that host pool. Azure Stack HCI also supports many types of hardware and on-premises network capabilities, so performance and user density might vary compared to session hosts running on Azure. AVD virtual machine sizing guidelines are very broad, so you should use them for initial performance estimates and monitor after the deployment, which is standard of AVD anyway, you do that anyway, <clears throat> even if it's in the cloud. Finally, you can only join session hosts on Azure Stack HCI to an active directory domain services domain. So there's no uh, Microsoft Onter integration, which you'd expect that anyway. Do you know what I mean? I, I won't quite expect that quite yet, but um, so it has to be on premises. And again, if you had a VDI, you know, on, on premises, it'd be the same anyway. So kind of not really missing out much there. Um, so again, it says demo time. It's not demo time. We're actually going to be jumping into the final. Uh, the final part of the interview I did with, with the amazing Lisa Clark, uh, Microsoft MVP also uh, works with Dell as well in the Azure Stack um, area. And again, uh, loads of great insights from her in the, in the It was so fun to chat with her about this topic. She's so passionate about it. Um, and I, and I, just, I, I really do click with passionate people, especially when they're passionate about technology. So it was great. And, and I, hopefully you enjoy this second part of the interview. Um, just before I do hand over to that, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody for your support in this series. Uh, quick announcement that the next series is going to be back to the exam topics. One of them will be uh, SC100, which is the um, sort of security architect one. So hopefully people enjoy that. I've got kind of the intro coming out later on this week. So I'll be showing what I'm actually going to talk about. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for your support and hopefully you enjoy this second part of the interview. Um, so no, that's that's really interesting. Uh, like, I think I mentioned before we, before we started recording that my own interest in Azure Stack and the reason why I did this series was because um, it, Azure Stack HCI became GA with, with AVD recently, which is huge. And, and the, the EUC world went crazy because I think people have been waiting for this for a while. Yeah. Um, uh, so can you tell us a bit about the, the different use cases? So again, I've in my in my series, I've tried to define the different use cases for Hub, uh, HCI, and Edge. But can you, from from obviously, be working with it day in day out, 
Can you kind of explain a little bit about those differences and, and, and some of the industry experience with clients that you've had with those yeah. three different entities of it? Yeah. So like I said, this space all kicked off with Azure Stack Hub, right? It was formerly known as just Azure Stack. Then they added the hub because then they turned it into a portfolio and they added HCI and they added Edge. Um, and hub was, I mean, when you think about what hub is, it's, it's still to this day is amazing, right? It's basically um, Azure delivered as an appliance um completely air gapped from azure or the internet if you need it to be mm -hmm. so it brings with it the azure portal the azure marketplace etc right i think hub was potentially a little bit ahead of its time actually microsoft tend to do this right when they launched azure they went kind of pass first and mm -hmm. they realized that mm, actually people are still very much in the ias space so then they focused on ias whereas aws went kind of ias first um, and I think Hub had a little bit of that, but um, it, and it, <laughs> people tried to force it into all kinds of different use cases that <laughs> it wasn't meant to be uh, used for, like competing with Azure, right? Um, where it is now, and actually, you know, Microsoft delivered some updated kind of selling guidance to OEMs, must have been 18 months to two years ago, actually. Um, and not every OEM is still delivering uh, Hub. There's ourselves and, and, and another OEM. Uh, they issued some updated selling guidance and it was really to kind of niche down on Azure Stack Hub's use case. So Azure Stack Hub really is where there is a desire to use kind of Azure IaaS functionality, but you have to be completely air gapped. And I use the term air gapped, right? Because people tend to use the terms disconnected. Well, what does that mean? Yeah, like, because we'll come on to that with Azure Stack HCI. So air gapped completely zero interaction with Azure, potentially even the internet. And so we've seen that really um, find its niche within areas like defense, within areas where parts of the world where there really is no infrastructure, right? And mm -hmm. um, that is where Hub fits now. Um, but all of the focus is on Azure Stack HCI, and we'll, and we'll come on to that. Um, in terms of development for the roadmap, et cetera, it's all on Azure Stack HCI. It's all Azure Stack HCI and Azure Arc. And I think we'll see the portfolio evolve again kind of over the next few years. So Azure Stack HC, no, Azure Stack Edge, sorry, <laughs> is um, it, it's what it says, right? It's Edge. It's for Edge use case scenarios. So it's for doing like video and image inferencing at the Edge. The interesting thing about Azure Stack Edge is it's actually a Microsoft first party product. So you purchase it from them um, and you pay for it on a consumption basis. So you can actually send it back when you're done. Right. Um, yeah, interesting. yeah. So, and um, yeah, you, and now I don't know, I actually know if this is still the case, but you used to have to manage it from the Azure portal. So again, it was for customers in Azure, had edge use cases, were happy with that consumption based type model as well, um, really for them. In the last year or so, actually, I think Azure Stack Edge was updated to run the Azure Stack HCI operating system. So again, oh, right. that kind of tells you where we're heading. Um, and then Azure Stack HCI came along uh, as an operating system delivered from Azure in December 2020. And I think where that came from is actually Microsoft realized and the customer kind of, there was a customer shift in terms of their comfortableness, let's say, with using Azure and connecting to Azure. Um, and I think they realized that actually customers be had become a lot more comfortable with, do you know what, I don't mind my control plane being up in Azure, as long as my data and my workloads are on my infrastructure in my data center, or you know, I need to do this kind of workload at the edge, it has to run on this hardware at the edge, but actually I'm okay with using the Azure portal and Azure services. Um, and that's really, I think, one of the reasons as to why Azure Stack HCI came along, because it's an operating system delivered from Azure, right, consumed from Azure as a service with, like we've talked about, this deep integration into Azure, right? You can view your clusters in the portal. You can deploy virtual machines from the portal to your cluster. Um, you can run Azure Kubernetes service on your Azure Stack yeah. HCI now. You can run Azure Virtual Desktop on your Azure Stack HCI now. Um, so the control plane's all up there in Azure, but your data and your workloads are still fundamentally on your hardware in your data center. Mm -hmm. um, and that is definitely where things are, you know, you ask like, 
kind of where do you think the focus will be in the next couple of years? It's definitely Azure Arc and it's definitely Azure Stack HCI in terms of that portfolio and in terms of roadmap and development. I mean, it, again, really, really interesting to hear those different sort of use cases for each and hopefully. It's cleared up for me anyway, because I was still kind of, even after doing the stuff that I've done and reading up on it, I was still like, you know, I yeah. wanted to hear kind of an industry perspective, which is obviously, which is great hearing from yourself about it. And and again, it's interesting to hear what you said around that, that you know, so the next four to five years, the what you've seen anyway, it'll be as just like HCI that gets probably more development. And although the hub and edge will probably still be there, it's HCI that's going to be getting a lot more traction. Yeah, and um, it, you know, you asked about use cases as well, and it's funny because I actually get asked this all the time from the sales teams. They're like, "What is the, you know, what is the target industry? What's the target use case, right?" And it's funny because I work as a an EMEA overlay, so I can get pulled into any opportunity, big, medium, small, any industry across countries in Europe, right? And I'm seeing opportunities right across the board in all of these. So what is the thing, right, that strings those all together? Because you can actually start from as little as one node on Azure Stack HCI now as well, right? I so I read, yeah, I think I read that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. two nodes, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, 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 you start at one node now. It used to be two, <clears throat> is now one. Um, yeah, yeah. So what that means is it's lending itself to edge use cases. It's lending itself to data center use cases. But the thing that, the kind of string that runs through them all is customers who have an Azure strategy, who've invested in Azure, particularly those who have started you know, to consume Azure Monitor, use Azure policies, they've got Entra yeah. ID, et cetera. Customers who have workloads in Azure but have to have some workloads remain on-prem for a variety of reasons across industries, right, and countries. And again, what do they want? Consistency. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, exactly, you know, exactly. And that's the kind of use case that actually <laughs> pops up regardless of the industry, regardless of the size of customer, and kind of regardless mm. of the use case. It sounds like it's a very, very good space to be part of, if I'm honest, especially for that that future sort of look at the, the way the industry is going. Um, I suppose now where, I, where I'd like to end the, the, the discussion is a bit more personal to you, really. Yeah. What is your favorite part about working in this technology? From, from a personal perspective, what's your what what do you love about working with this technology? Because again, the stuff I love about AVD and all, you know, we all have our own preferences. I want to hear what's your, and I'm sure that the viewers also, what's your personal favorite thing about working with this technology? Yeah, this, do you know what? That is a great question. And I was, I've been trying to think about what the answer is. <laughs> because I have been in it for, you know, like eight years. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm still here. Um, <clears throat> So it can't think, be that bad if you're still here after eight years. No, it can't be that bad. No. Sometimes I do get a little bit frustrated explaining that, you know, cloud is not the enemy. <laughs> yeah. Cloud is an operating model. <laughs> there are reasons as to why workloads may not run in the cloud. We don't need to make them up. And obviously Microsoft recognize that, right? Because they're supplying or they're creating solutions for that. Mm. I think fundamentally it is it's a really interesting space because you sit between two very different worlds. Mm. So you sit between the cloud native world and the on-premises world. So I might say traditional, whatever, mm. right? You sit between the cloud native world and the on-premises world, which do tend to knock heads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And actually, one of the really cool things about being part of this technology is this Azure Stack Art, Azure Stack HCI really kind of provides solutions to help bring these two areas together, right? They, yeah, they yeah. quite often have very different ways of working. They have different kind of focuses. They might have different concerns. They might have different levels of concerns about certain things, but there is fundamentally a need for both of those areas, right? That's mm -hmm. clear as day right now in the world. And so I think it's quite cool um, to kind of sit between those two worlds. It can be frustrating at times, but okay. you get, I think it's the, the people element of that. And then also the tech element is that it's evolved so much over the years and it's evolving at a much faster pace than it ever has before. Um, and it's kind of been able to say, hey, to these two different types of people, Here's right. tech, 
which actually can help you both achieve what you need to achieve. So yeah, I think I think it must be something to do with that. <laughs> no, I think that's a great answer, and it, it makes sense. Like I said, it, you, you, you've almost got one foot in each each part, um, and you need to obviously. Obviously, like you said, the, the frustration is you get the frustration from both parts, but you also get the benefits. Yeah. Um, being able to work with, and and also, I suppose stuff I like about hybrid, let's say, is those those organisations that that want to do that journey into the cloud. You can help them along that way, and then seeing them when it's like there and seeing what you've helped do, I suppose, can be can be really satisfying. Yeah, and um, AVD is like, I think AVD is going to be another catalyst for that because. Mm. When AVD got announced as a public preview, mm -hmm. my, like my inbox and my colleagues' inboxes exploded. People wanted to test it. People wanted to get quotes for hardware to run on it, etc. Um, and it's brought in this this whole other kind of user group, like the EUC user group as well, into the mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's the really cool part as well. Like sometimes it's difficult because I can't be the expert in all of these different things, mm -hmm. but we can kind. I can. Yeah, I get to work with all of these different groups and help them come together, which is quite satisfying. The, the conversations I've had, when, and I, I, won't, I won't talk about it specifically, but it's what we spoke about offline. Um, that in itself, the, the amount of, the amount of organisations I know of that are now looking at Azure Stack HCI because they've got AVD and they want that that on premises yeah. AVD. They want AVD in their own data centres, basically. Yeah. And people have been screaming as a person who's worked with AVD for a long time. People have been screaming about that for ages. So I think this is, I can honestly see um, you've been very busy coming up. <laughs> um, <laughs> and as your stack HCI really kicking off in the next couple of years. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and that really, that that's really all. Those are some of the questions I had I wanted to discuss with you. Thank you so much for making time. I really do appreciate it. And I think this is, I can't think of a better way to end this series than, than speaking to, to, to yourself. Um, like I said, as soon, uh, no, as soon as I thought, right, I just like hit hub, I'm doing a topic. And I'm like, yeah, that's to be Lisa. So I wanted to, <laughs> um, we'll, I'll, I'll put um, a, a URL to, to Lisa's uh, socials and her own YouTube channel, um, which has got some great content on there in the description. Um, so yeah, thank you for thank you for closing the series with me. It's been a fun one to do. Um, thank you for all those people that have been been supporting. Sorry, can you say? No, just say glad to have you be involved and be part of the Azure hybrid space. Love it. <laughs> well, you know what? It's, it's been fun to do. Like I said, this is not this is not going to be the end of it. I want to do more content on it. I think the more I learn. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and that concludes the 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 series. So thank you for watching. Until next time. Goodbye.